Hey, what's up guys? Sean Fagan here from Muay Thai Guy and today we're going over super fun and technical Muay Thai shadow boxing workout that is perfect for Muay Thai addicts but also for kickboxers and all kinds of martial artists. And I love shadow boxing because you get to work on everything. Your technique, your conditioning, your fluidity, your creativity. And so this is aimed at beginners but if you're advanced, this also can help you with the fundamentals and some other more fancy strikes. So if you like it, make sure you subscribe because I'll be coming out with much more. And let me know what you think in the comments below as well. Let's get to it. Alright, let's get right into the shadow boxing workout with some straights, teeps, and checks. And by straights, I mean jabs and crosses. And by teeps, you could do a lead teep with a rear push kick, whichever one you prefer. But the main idea is I'm loosening up. I'm trying to keep my technique nice and sharp while adding some defensive maneuvers like the check to my repertoire. Because a lot of people, when they first start shadow boxing or fighting Muay Thai, everyone knows how to fight offensively, but they don't know how to defend. So adding these checks in, adding these long range weapons, Weapons like these straights and teeps will play a huge role in your advancement as a Muay Thai fighter or just a student in the game. So really perfecting these and making sure everything's nice and straight, you have good defense, and you're loosening up the hips and the entire body for the first round is a great place to start because it helps you focus on your control, your balance, and just getting mobile and loose for later rounds. Round two is single strikes, and this can be any of the eight limbs. It could be punches, kicks, knees, elbows, whatever you prefer. But the idea is I'm still loosening up while focusing on clean technique. So when I'm throwing my straights, my elbows nice and tight, I'm using some fakes here and there. And when I'm throwing my roundhouses, I really like to throw them so I go 360. So this way it really uh, emphasizes the idea that I'm kicking through my opponent. It helps with my balance and my coordination and everything like that. So during this round, I want you to focus on single strikes, making sure it's as perfect technique as you can, staying nice and loose, nice and mobile. Uh, keeping your hands up, working defensive postures as well, maybe throwing in some fakes here and there, but mainly just focusing on those single strikes and making them as perfect as possible. Ready to start ramping it up a bit, let's get some punch combos with a kick finish. And this is key as a Muay Thai fighter or a kickboxer because most of the time you're going to throw combinations, you almost always want to finish with a kick because if you start your combinations with some hands with a jab, a jab cross, a hook cross, most of the time your opponent's going to be defending the punches and they're going to be susceptible to those kicks. And so training your muscle memory every time you throw a hand combination to finish with a roundhouse kick is a great way for it to translate into sparring or more importantly in a fight. And it's important to also break the rhythm and also do some cadence striking. So you'll see me finish with my right cross and throw a right kick, but sometimes it's good to finish with a right cross and throw a left kick. Round four, let's get into some defensive maneuvers. So you're gonna throw combinations, you could finish with a kick, finish with a punch, whatever it might be, but add some evasion, maybe lean back, maybe check a kick, maybe block a kick, maybe catch a kick, it could be anything. You have some head movement, use your long guard, uh, evade body kicks, evade teeps, but the idea is you wanna build in that muscle memory because a lot of people when they shadow box, or they do the heavy bag, they focus on just offense and I want you to focus on defense as well because most of the time once you start throwing hand combinations or any combinations for that matter you're gonna be countered because that's how fighters fight so you want to make sure that you drill this into you every time you throw a combination or a strike you want to end with some type of defensive posture and just like it's important to mix up your offensive techniques it's important to mix up your defensive techniques so you'll see me using head movement long guards checks and everything in between Time to get aggressive with some forward fighting. This is the pressure fighting that you want to be drilling. So you want to be moving forward, throwing combinations and techniques that are driving your opponent back. So I like to use teeps to drive my opponent back. I switch stances a lot, as you can see. But if you're trying to just start off as a beginner or with the basic strikes, just throw some hand combinations, move forward, and just constantly be having your hands up because as you move forward, you're going to be open for some counter strikes. Another great technique is to march forward. This is a, a very Muay Thai type of technique where you lift your knees up and just kind of march forward and then you could follow up with a kick, a knee, or whatever it may be. Next up we got some counter fighting and I've learned to love this style of fighting because 
you can be super dangerous while backing up. And this is great if you're fighting an aggressive fighter because it leaves them open to a lot of techniques. And so if you're able to visualize your opponent moving forward at you and you're cutting angles, uh, using certain techniques to step off to the side and land roundhouse kicks or land body combinations, whatever it may be, this will make you a super dangerous and well-rounded fighter. So you want to make sure that you're using fakes, you're using defense because you're fighting someone who's moving forward at you. So you really got to visualize this if you want to get the most out of your shadow boxing. Round seven is just all upper body strikes, so that's punches and elbows. So I want you to focus on obviously keeping your hands up because if you're elbowing, then you're in elbow range. And so your hands should always be up. Whenever you throw your right hand, your left hand should be guarding your face and vice versa. And mix up the diversity. Make sure you're using your long guard. Make sure you're using your turtle shell. Maybe try some spinning elbows here and there. But make sure you're just staying diverse, you're staying tight and technical because when it comes to throwing hands and throwing elbows, the more technical fighter is almost always going to win. So you want your straights to be straight and your hooks to be tight and your elbows to be nice, sharp, and short. That being said, make sure you're having fun, mess around with different elbow combinations as you see me going around here, throwing some spinning elbows, upward elbows, and everything in between. All right, let's work the opposite now. In round eight, we're doing just lower body strikes. So that's kicks, knees, and push kicks, or teeps, whatever you want to call them. So I want to make sure I'm mixing these up. Sometimes I'm doubling up on my left side. Sometimes I'm tripling up on my right side. But I want to make sure I'm staying just as diverse in my lower body strikes as I am my upper body strikes as well. So you'll see me switching from southpaw to orthodox because I think that's a really important concept. But if you don't feel that comfortable yet, stay in one stance. Really focus on your technique. Like I've been saying this entire shadow boxing workout, make sure everything is nice and tight and technical because that's going to play a big difference when you get into sparring. And like I've been mentioning in all these rounds, make sure you're focusing on defense too, throwing some checks in there, making sure you're evading, and making sure you're just staying aware that you're boxing a shadow, but you're visualizing someone in front of you. So make sure you still add the defensive maneuvers into anything that you do. So this way, when it comes to sparring or a fight, it's already kind of built in. Try some flying knees, jumping teeth, jumping kicks, whatever you want to do. Have fun with this round. But like I said, focus on technique over everything. In round nine, we're going to a creative flow. And this is honestly one of my most favorite because you get to be creative. You get to try different things out that you normally wouldn't try. Uh, try different combinations, try different footwork and pattern setting and pattern breaking and see what works best for you. This is where you really just get to have a little bit of fun. Uh, try things that you normally wouldn't try during sparring or during pad work or whatever it may be and mix in different types of combinations, maybe some flying knees or spinning elbows. Uh, so this way you can get a little bit better with the more advanced techniques, but like I always say, basics and fundamentals and defense are the most important stuff that you need to get good at. So if you can add and implement those into your creative flow and make sure you're focusing on each different individual aspect, it'll be super, super important. Round 10, let's finish strong with a fight pace shadow boxing round. And this is obviously going close to 100%, if not 100%, but making sure you're still in control and still balanced and making sure that you're working on all the fundamentals while implementing them into a fight pace type of round. This will obviously test your cardio and test, test your coordination, overall athleticism and footwork, but also test your creativity because you really got to visualize you're actually fighting someone. So you shouldn't just be moving forward. You shouldn't just be moving backwards. You should be mixing it up as much as you can, making sure you're adding the defense element into your shadow boxing routine and making sure you're switching up combos, maybe switching stances if you feel comfortable doing that and trying to really just put the pressure and the pace at a serious high because you're finishing up. You got to go strong. You got to push the pace and this is where your conditioning and cardio will come into play but also your composure and overall balance so make sure you're mixing in a little bit of everything and finish strong got a few seconds left snap those punches turn on those kicks throw those combinations 
push the pace, put the pressure on your opponent, your shadow boxing opponent, and finish strong. Let's go, let's go, let's go. A few seconds left, and we'll call it from there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that shadow Muay Thai workout and took a thing or two that you can add to your own training sessions. If you like this video, make sure you let me know so this way I can create more if it's something that you like to see. And make sure you comment below. Let me know what you thought. Uh, if there's anything that you want me to add to the future workouts or if there's anything that you feel like you felt like you learned and are going to implement to your game, I'd love to hear from you. And like I said, make sure you subscribe because I'm coming out with a ton of content and this is just the beginning. So make sure you sign up, don't miss out, and also check out my free Muay Thai Masterclass if you want to take your striking to the next level. We're here in Thailand, I'm the Muay Thai Guy, I'll catch you next time. <laughs>